Last night during President Trump's town hall, he called on Nancy Pelosi to reach a deal with Republicans on another round of economic relief saga. Yeah, that's right. And according to the Washington Post reporter Jeff Stein, four House Democrats are now calling on Pelosi to accept Trump's offer, including Ro Khanna, who's been publicly pushing for the speaker to provide relief for their constituents. So Democratic strategist Roger Fisk and culture editor over at The Federalist, Emily Jashinsky, they're now back with us to discuss. It's an interesting dynamic. Um, Roger and I will start with you, which is that you you can see this dynamic where you have some House Democrats, you have everybody from a progressive like Rokana to like the problem solvers people who are coming together and saying, hey, we should take this deal. It's $1.8 trillion that's on the table. I mean, we saw her disastrous interview with Wolf Blitzer. By and large, Roger, it seems that she's been dragging her feet on this deal because she doesn't want to give the president a win. I mean, it's quite immoral in, in our view over here, but on the politics of it, how does this play out for Pelosi? What do you think, Roger? Well, I, it makes sense that members of, frankly, of on either side, uh, distance themselves from Washington leadership as they head into their cycles, right? So that's kind of a common posture. The thing that really blows my mind is I think back to, um, I was working in the Senate during the Clinton impeachment, and there was a story at the time that President Clinton called Senator Lott, the majority leader at the time, and Lott was like, oh, God, he's going to beat me up about impeachment and everything else. And Clinton was actually calling about legislation. And I think of that because the idea that this president has gone a year without speaking uh, to the duly elected Speaker of the House um, just show, tells you everything you need to know about how much he's able to put country over himself. And I mean, it, it, for someone who portrays themselves as the great deal maker, he seems yeah. to be absolutely a wall in this entire equation. So I and get Roger, it on the, think, on the representative end. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, Sagar and I completely agree yeah. with you on that. I made that case here right. as well that he's been absent, and if he really wanted a deal, he was the person who single-handedly could have done the most to get one done. But focusing on the the Democrats here and Pelosi and this one point eight trillion dollar deal that's been on the put on the table, the um, Democrat offer has been two point two trillion, so it's not that far off. You're talking about another round of stimulus checks. You're talking about help for families. You're talking about help for small businesses, for schools, for airline workers. Um, you're talking about a four hundred dollar unemployment plus up. It's not a bad deal. Should Pelosi take it? Would it be in the best interest? Put the politics aside. Do you think that it would be in the best interest of American people for her to go ahead and take that deal offered by Mnuchin in the White House? And that's for me? Yes, yes that's for you. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, I think within another week or 10 days, you'll see that she actually gets them to tick up another couple hundred billion dollars and probably get towards that magical number of two. Um, but I, you know, fundamentally, I think the political dynamic is that she's looking at the presidential election, and she's essentially on an escalator going up in terms of political capital, and the president's on an escalator going down in terms of political capital. So I think time is somewhat on her side. The flip side of that coin is she obviously needs to be concerned about those 20 or 30 members that come from flip districts. Yeah, that's right. Emily, let me go to you. So you're a little bit more true con than I am. Um, let's say, <laughs> so we're going to have, uh, yeah, it's very true. So we got a $1.8 trillion offer on the table. One of the things I really can't understand is why Pelosi doesn't make this deal and then have the Senate Republicans kill it, because they almost certainly would. And that's actually my question to you, which is that we've seen now that Seth McConnell has come out. He said, I'm not putting anything more than half a trillion on the table. That's literally a quarter of the White House offer. So my question is, do you think that's the right position? They have a they have concocted an ideology, in my view, where they think they're going to lose by spending more money uh, in a the weeks before an election. And second, which is that, do you think Trump would be able to use his personal popularity in the party to force many of these people to vote? What do you think? Yes. To the second point, I think yes. And I think that's actually a really important point. Um, to the broader point, I don't think anybody is handling this well. I don't know. I, I really actually can't understand the positions of either party, except that I think they both think they have leverage because both of them think they're going to win the presidential election. And both of them have these completely false mindsets about yes. the public appetite for deal making and for spending. Right. And when when people actually are just like, listen, 
we need some sort of like practical measure to keep our heads above water. Um, I do on an optimistic note, and I'm really optimistic. I'm actually amazed that they're still talking, you know, because talks were like pretty dead. And if it takes someone like Abigail Spanberger, Spanberger and Ro Khanna, two people who, you know, you have a moderate and a progressive to say that we need to just push this through. I, I, that makes me really optimistic that uh, people are going to get the help they need. Well, and Roger, let's talk about the stakes here. New York Times has new data on savings accounts and people who are unemployed. What it looks like for them is basically after that $600 unemployment check ended back in May, their savings have fallen off the cliff. I think we have this element. We can put it up on the screen. You can see the chart, the way that the savings just completely, um, wow. you know, took a nosedive. Uh, among unemployed people after that $600 plus up ended. And so that's where we are. That was back in August. You can only imagine what September looked like. That, I'm sure, continued down. And people are kind of about to hit rock bottom here. Utility bills piling up across the country by the millions. Uh, the eviction moratorium hasn't potentially hasn't turned out to be all that it was initially touted as. So that's the environment that we're facing I know that Pelosi thinks the politics, the presidential politics are better to deny Trump a deal. But at some point, don't you have to put the concerns of people who are looking at their bank accounts and seeing it drift down to zero first? Sure. I mean, somehow the folks that um, uh, reflect are reflected in that graph that you just showed uh, alluded the Wall Street Journal poll. I think we can all agree. Right. Um, the you know when I say ten days from now I'm, I say that very specifically and and to kind of weave together one of Emily's points and one of your points Saga is you could very easily see Pelosi pass this somewhere around Monday or Tuesday of the week before the election so that you basically then frame and to Saga's point about pushing the Republicans to having to bring this to the floor and everything you can see how there's a calculus under there about the optics and the timing and framing all this um, in the context of the presidential race for the last six or seven days of it. Yeah, I think that's right. Emily, uh, yes or no, do you think the Republicans would actually kill the bill? I think they might actually do it. I truly believe that they would. No, not if it's, it, I, I don't think they would. Um, mm. But I also think it's ridiculous that, you know, we're having these, I think people in Washington make these calculuses like Nancy Pelosi right now. If we can push this into election and we can win the election, then we, everyone will be better off and everyone will thank us when it's mm. like, it's immediate and urgent and people don't have time for that sort of like, you know, galaxy brain. If we could push this just a little bit further, everyone will ultimately better off, be better off. People just need help. Yeah. yeah, I mean, couldn't agree with you more there. That's All the right. bottom line. Guys, great to see you both. Enjoy Thank your you. weekend. Thanks, guys. Coming up, Kamala Harris is no longer going to travel with the Joe Biden campaign after her communications director tested positive for coronavirus. We're going to discuss the impact on the campaign when rising returns. <laughs> 